Um, if you have been wondering about what NG Sri Lanka is, it's a community for Angular developers in Sri Lanka. Uh, we are not that much active uh, due to the obvious reasons, and uh, you know, but we are actually trying to make uh, better in terms of doing more community events. Uh, with that, let's jump into today's discussion. It's a collaborative event joining hands with uh, Gapstars today. And we will be talking about one of the important concepts, uh, which is about building desktop class product productivity apps with Angular and Project Fugu. Uh, you will get to learn more about the objectives of PWS and how to integrate uh, PWA capabilities into Angular project. Also, you will hear about uh, the latest and greatest updates on the web platform APIs. And uh, finally, we will take some questions. If you have any questions, uh, yeah, before jumping into the discussion, let me do some housekeeping announcement. Uh, it's going to be an hour session, I hope. Uh, if you have any questions, please post, uh, post them in the chat. Uh, we will take them as we go along. Also, uh, please uh, keep your uh, keep yourself on mute as well. We will be posting some links on the chat. Make sure to uh, respond to them as well. With that, let me introduce our guest today, uh, Christian. A label from Germany, who is working as a consultant and think at Think Culture, and also a Google Develop expert on Angular. Uh, welcome to the show, Christian. It's great to have you. Do you want to add anything which I have missed? It's perfectly fine. That sounds really good. Really good. <laughs> that was very All comprehensive. Right. Okay. Yep. Uh, so, uh, so it's fine. Uh, yeah, we will be talking about uh, progressive web apps, and it has been there for some time, which is a cutting-edge web technology that comes uh, combines the uh, best of web as well as mobile applications, so, uh, which provides you know fast, reliable, and engaging experience to end users. Without much delay, I will hand it over to Christian. Uh, yep, you can take it over. All right, thank you. Uh, for that very warm welcome. Uh, so hi everyone, my name is Chris. As you can see, I'm in vacation mode already. So tomorrow I will be um, I'm flying to Portugal. Uh, that's why I'm a little bit excited already. Um, yeah, and that's also why I wear this t-shirt today. So just because I'm happy about the vacation that's uh, soon going to start. Yeah, I think we can basically also just skip the slide because we said everything. Today we want to talk about PWAs, so progressive air apps. Um, which is a possibility to um, display web applications um, on the operating system in a way that they look and behave as if they were native applications. Um, and um, Project Fugu uh, provides new interfaces. Um, and Angular is a great uh, framework to build large-scale applications. So that's how all of that stuff fits together. Um, and that's what I want to talk about today. Before we dive into the topic, I want to show you a demo. And the nice thing is that every one of you can also try out this demo on any device that you have. So it works on your Mac OS, on your Mac, for example, on your Windows machine, on your Linux machine, on your iPhone, on your iPad, on your Android tablet, on your Android smartphone, uh, and what else uh, kind of device you have, um, this uh, web application will work. What it does is it implements um, the Windows 95 version of Microsoft Paint. Uh, and that's a productivity application, which is another part of the title. A productivity application typically is an app where you edit a document or something similar, a spreadsheet or a drawing, like in this case, where you typically interact with the file system, save files, you open files, overwrite them, and so on where you interact with the operating system in different ways, for example, by sharing a file or copying or pasting it to the clipboard. And this application that we see here is all web-based and um, it's a PWA and uses Project Fugu APIs. And what this is capable of, I wanna show you in this first live demo. And again, if you want, you can open this application as well on your device. It's just paint.js.org, just as you can see it here in the slide. I think I will also put it in the, the chat and you can open it right away. So here is the link. OK, um, so what I will do is I will bring um, Microsoft Edge over here. Um, this is Edge Beta. Um, I use this uh, browser because it's a separate browsing profile, uh, because sometimes uh, I try out a little, a little stuff. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, and so uh, this beta version of Edge is my favorite browser to do this. 
Um, here you can now see the application. And the idea of Progressive Web Apps is that the application just launches in your browser. So if you want to do this drawing, you can just go to paint.js.org and everything will work just fine. So here in the browser, without installing anything, you can directly use all of the tools. Here we can draw something. I don't know. Here, Angular. Oh, sorry. That's, I guess, no, let's do that again. Um, that was the worst Angular logo ever drawn. Um, so let's try again. Boop, 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 boop. Well, that's not even that bad, I think. Um, then we can use the tool here and we can draw that. Hey, ah, thank you for that clap. It was the best, uh, the best I could do. Um, okay. Right. So that's, that's the idea. We can, we can draw something here. And again, this works regardless of the operating system. It's all web-based. So it also works with your finger. It works with your pen, um, on, on your device. It really doesn't matter. Now, to be honest, that's nothing really special because you could do that in the web for um, ages by now. And, um, now this is where progressive web apps and project Fugu come in. First of all, I want to talk about the progressive web apps part. What this means is that I can now install this application. And this can be done in Chromium-based browsers here from the address bar, where it says install paint app, and then we can say install. What will happen next is that the tab here in this browser will close, and instead, I'll tap it off my other screen, and instead, this window will now open. Now, important to note is that this window is still just the browser tab that I had opened before. And you even see that because it's the same drawing that I had opened before. Um, but now, basically, this app appears as if it would be a platform-specific app. So for example, here it has an entry in the dock, which I can move to the pinned apps, for example. Or I can use the app switcher, where also now this application appears. And you can see it even reads paint. And here in the system menu for macOS, it's in the upper left corner, it also reads paint and no longer Microsoft Edge beta, where this application was installed from. That is the first um, feature of PWAs. You can now install the app to your operating system. And then if you click it uh, in the dock or on the uh, home screen, it will appear as if it would be a platform specific application. That's number one. There's also a second feature, um, and that is that this application now also starts super fast. So if we close this app and say leave here, and I click the pinned item in the taskbar, you see that the app opens instantly. Yeah. If I would now also turn my uh, network connection off, which I can't do because otherwise I would lose the connection to you, then it would also work. So the second important feature of Progressive Web Apps is that this application can run offline. And offline means it's not only running when it's offline, but also that it starts super quickly, even if you are online. There's no, I think, not a single frame where this application isn't really loaded. So you click it, it's there like it's. That's the second feature um, that's important for progressive web apps. And that was the second level. And now I want to talk about the third level. So we need to bring back our Angular shield. Yeah, this time it's not so super nice. I'm Deeply sorry, we should have saved this before. Well, never mind. Um, this is our Angular logo again. And now we want to take it even to the, to another level, right? We want to improve it even more. And we can do this by, for example, um, selecting a portion of the image. Let's say we just select this um, Angular shield here. We click Copy. And now I can bring up the preview app of Mac and say, File, New from Clipboard. And it will open here in a new window, the contents from my clipboard. Now I zoomed in into the paint window, right? That's why they appear uh, different in size. Um, but this is basically exactly what I selected in, um, in the paint app here. And it also works the other way around. So if I change something here, I could paste it back using the edit menu. But that's not it. We can also save uh, this neat little drawing here. So for example, I can say ng Sri Lanka and put it on my desktop. So I can also bring the finder here. And if we now preview this, we can see it's our drawing again, right? The drawing is super big, right? And the angular shield is just a portion of it. That's why, again, it looks a little bit different in size. But this is really the drawing that we have here uh, in, this, um, in this application. 
Now, it's also nothing really special. I mean, you could download stuff before on the web. Um, but the cool thing is that you can now also, um, let's, let's maybe use this angular bluish color here, but you can also keep a handle to this file now. See that it's still like this tealish color or cyanish color here in the, in the preview. If I click Save now, it can now even overwrite a file that it has created before or that has been opened with before. That's now also possible. That's also a feature of Project Fugu. What else can you do? You can also share um, this uh, this file by clicking Send, and then you could share it using AirDrop or send it to a different uh, application on this device. We can also um, uh, get the list of all installed fonts on this operating system using another API provided by um, by Project Fugu, the so-called uh, oh, uh, what is it? Fonts table, local fonts uh, uh, API that allows us to enumerate like all of the APIs that are, uh, sorry, all of the fonts that are installed on the operating system, which of course is very important for um, applications like this. So we can, for example, use the infamous Comic Sans. Does this work? Yes, looks like Comic Sans. Okay, and so it turns out that you can really do almost everything that the original Paint for Windows 95 could do with exactly one exception. There's one thing that you cannot do, and that is set the wallpaper, set the current drawing as a wallpaper. There's no API for this. I don't expect that to happen like anytime soon. Uh, but anything, everything else can be done from within the browser, including closing the app, right clicking the file, and then opening it with the PWA that we have just installed. So if I click this and say open here, you will see that this application opens again with the image that I have opened it with. And that's the third level, Project Fugu and the additional APIs brought to us by this um, initiative. All right. Now, I want to go through the different steps basically in this order. So in the three levels, like the basic paint app, then the PWA things, then capabilities brought to, uh, to us by Project Fugu, and then the progressive enhancement part. So let's start with that. Um, so what I'm using here in this, epic, in this demo is a canvas element um, that is nothing new, works in browsers for over a decade now. Um, originally uh, implemented by Safari, uh, now supported by all browsers. So that's it's, it's really super compatible, uh, especially when you use the 2D rendering context, which I use here because it's all about like drawing pixels um, on a 2D bitmap, so to say. And this is uh, what we are doing here. So this application is super compatible, basically on all browsers since IE, I don't know, 10 maybe or something like this, this application would work. And that's important to bear in mind. And that's also what, why I always recommend to build applications for the browser, right? So you should target the browser first and then you can run it like almost everywhere. Okay, now for the second step. Uh, now we wanna make this application um, a PWA. Uh, and this means that this application should fulfill most of uh, the 10 characteristics that you can see here. Um, on this slide. First of all, those applications should be responsive. What does that mean? Um, that means that those applications don't use a fixed layout. So maybe I can bring back the, the paint app here, right? Um, so this is not a fixed layout, but it really responds to your size of the screen. So if you have a small screen, like here, the, the application adapts, so to say. If you have a big screen, right, you have like more space for the drawing and so on. Of course, that's really simple in, in this particular case. Um, but you should make sure that um, yeah, you don't expect a certain certain um, uh, a screen resolution or that should force a screen resolution on your user. It should be linkable, so we should be able to link to this application, which is what I just did. I just sent you the link and you clicked on it. Then those apps should be discoverable, so we sh should be able to distinguish between if this is a, like just a normal website, yeah, so a news website, for example, or if this is really an app. Um, they should be installable. That means we can install them to the system. This is what we have just seen. Should be app-like. Um, that means should look and appear 
and behave as if those applications were platform specific apps, um, which my application sort of does, I guess. It's it's a vintage app, right? So it mimics this uh, Windows 95 style. Uh, they should be connectivity independent. That means they should also run offline, it should be fresh. Um, offline means we will have need to have an offline copy. And this offline copy should be as up to date as possible. Then they should be safe. This means that they will have to be um, transported via HTTPS. If you have a look at the link in the chat, this is exactly HTTPS, right? And it needs to be because otherwise many of the APIs would not be available um, for the application. But I guess it's a standard nowadays anyway, right? So that's not, not really debatable. Um, then uh, they should be reachable. If it makes sense, they would send notification to the user to move them to open the app again, right? So, for example, this is what, um, uh, instant message to like WhatsApp and so on, Signal. Uh, maybe there's also a special messenger that you use. Um, and th they use push notifications to bring the users back. That doesn't make sense for PaintJS, though, because in Windows 95 days, uh, push notifications uh, were not really a thing. And then those applications should be progressive. This means that they should not exclude users with older browsers. So again, for example, IE 10 or let's say 11 or an old version of, of Microsoft Edge or Firefox or whatnot, um, they should be able to run on those older browsers, um, even though if that means that basically those users will won't get like the best experience. But more to that later. OK. Now, PWA is not a specification that you can find. If you search for W3C, uh, you, you won't find a specification that is called Progressive Web Apps. But what you will find is um, a specification that is called Web App Manifest and one that is called Service Worker. Now, a Web App Manifest um, contains the information for the appearance and behavior of the application when it's being installed. And the Service Worker takes care of the offline availability. So for starting, it's uh, very fast. And Web Manifest defines the icon, for example, uh, and the title of the app um, that is being used when it's installed on the home screen uh, or to the programs list um, of your operating system. Again, works in both ways, mobile and desktop, exactly the same way. What we do here is always cross-platform. Now, if you want to integrate PWA capabilities into your Angular application, there's a very simple way to do this. There's a command called ng-add at angular-pwa, and you can simply run this, and it will automatically add the web app manifest for you, and it will configure your application to use the Angular service worker for the offline capability. Now, for the next demo that um, we will show, I've prepared like a very simple version of this um, of the Paint app where we can now just add the PWA support to it. OK, so let me uh, bring up the code. This is, again, a normal, uh, a normal Angular project, right, with Angular 16, um, current version. Um, it's all module based though. So maybe you've heard it. Uh, there is like an alternative way of setting up um, uh, Angular projects now called the standalone API uh, that where the goal more or less is to get rid of those modules. Um, the PWA command is however not yet compatible with this new project setup. Uh, so that's why I here in this case stick um, with the existing mechanism. So basically the module based approach. OK, if we now want to add Angular PWA capabilities to the app, we simply run ng-add at Angular slash PWA, um, and it will search for a package. Uh, here, in this case, we found it. We want to install it and perform the changes that this schematic includes. And now you can see what happened after running the schematic. So first of all, we get a new configuration here. This is the ngsw config, where sw stands for service worker. Again, that thing that takes care of the offline capability of the application and also is responsible for this very high load time performance of the app. And here you can also see that because here is 
configured which files should be cached by the service worker. So for example, the index.html file should be available even when the application is or when the user is offline. The fav icon should be available and all the JavaScript and CSS files should be there. This is all configured by this service worker file, the service worker configuration. Okay, what else do we get? We get this um, manifest file here. This is the web app manifest that now, as I've said, takes care of um, displaying uh, the application on the user's home screen or in the dock. So for example, here, this bucket here and the paint name was configured uh, here in this web app manifest where you can specify a name, for example, or a short name. Name is for desktop systems, short name is for mobile systems. A theme color, that's the color of the, um, of the window bar, for example. Um, the different icons that you can define and so on and so forth. By default, Angular also adds some icons here. As you can see, they all show the Angular logo. And this is how we can basically find out um, that the application that we will soon install is actually, um, or that the web app manifest has actually been provided by Angular itself. Also, we adjust the Angular JSON to include the service worker in the build, and we adjust the module to uh, basically trigger that service worker when um, the application is in production mode. So this typically does not happen in dev mode. And in the index HTML, we link the web application manifest um, so that it basically takes effect. Okay, if I now now run ng build um, on the command line, we can build or we can uh, generate a productive build of this application. So we have to wait for a moment, and now I can go to the dist folder, paint workshop um, folder here, and I can use um, the light server command to launch the application. Now let me bring up Microsoft Edge and go to localhost three thousand port. And here we can now see that the application is being loaded. Um, and now you can also see here in the taskbar that there's an app available. Perfect. And if we click this, we see the name of the application from the web app manifest. Let's compare that. Uh, where is it? Web app manifest. That is Paint Workshop, right? This appears here. And this is the icon that we've seen. And if I now click Install, this app will open in a new window, just 10 minutes here. It will get its entry in the dock and so on. And if I close it and, you know, okay, sorry, there was a, a fail now. Um, so I can go to the About Apps page here. I can open the app and it starts instantly. So let me also move that over here, right? So let us see that again. Yeah, opens instantly with no delays whatsoever. Okay, um, basically that's the idea of PWAs, so installability and offline capability. Okay, on which operating systems uh, do we have this um, features available? So offline availability is supported by all browsers, so the Chromium-based ones, Chrome and Edge, uh, Safari and Firefox for years now, uh, five plus years by now. Um, installability is supported on Chrome and Edge and all um, operating systems. Um, on Safari, it's only currently supported on iOS and iPadOS. It will be supported also on macOS in the upcoming version macOS Sonoma. I will show you that in the next slide. Um, for Firefox, installation of web applications is only possible on Android at the moment. So there's no desktop PWA installability on the Firefox side, unfortunately. And uh, since uh, the uh, release iOS and iPadOS 16.4, um, we also have the ability to um, show push notifications on all relevant operating systems. Here's an example um, how the installation will look in macOS Sonoma from Safari. So as you can see, it pretty much looks the same. And it also, you get an entry in the doc, and basically this, the appearance of um, PWAs is even better than it is in Chrome, uh, because here really nothing basically shows that this is still a web application. So if we open the Paint uh, app, for example, uh, Chrome still renders those buttons here, like the three dots menu or edge in that case, right? That's currently not the case in 
the um, Safari version. Not sure if they will add it, uh, but right now it's not there. And again, this will be made available in the upcoming version of macOS. OK. And there also recently has been an update on push notifications, because you can now also receive push notifications on all relevant platforms, um, just as uh, platform-specific applications can. And here's a screenshot from iOS and iPadOS. And I also must say that Apple did the best integration for push notifications on all of the platforms I know. Those uh, push notifications really look as if they were platform-specific. Um, and that's really great. What you can also do um, since the version uh, where when they release this is display a little badge on an applications icon uh, to show that there have been changes, uh, that, for example, Android emails or to do's that you have to uh, to fulfill and that have, have not been done yet. Um, technically, that's a combination of two technologies, Web Notifications API, and Push API, and as I've said, now available on all uh, major browsers on all major platforms. OK, and that concludes the second level, PWAs. So that is installability, um, uh, offline capability, plus push notifications. OK, now let's talk about the next level. Uh, so even an even deeper integration with the operating system. This is where the following thingy comes in. Um, this is a pufferfish, um, and this is the mascot of Project Fugu. Fugu is uh, Japanese, as far as I know, uh, and it is a famous dish, um, which I was able to try uh, in March. So I was in Japan in March, and I tried Fugu for the first time. Um, and there's like a little side story, and that is that Fugu is actually poisonous. Uh, so the chef in the kitchen really needs to make sure that this fugu is prepared correctly. Because if it's done in the wrong way, you will potentially die from it. If it's prepared in the right way, it's really interesting because the meat of this fish tickles on your tongue because of the leftover poison, so to say. And this is a perfect uh, synonym for this entire effort. Because in the wrong hands, powerful APIs, right? For example, file system access can be a problem. In the right hands, it's super important. And I think applications like Photoshop or Visual Studio Code, Excel, PowerPoint, Word, and so on, they all need those APIs. And the web would be um, a less powerful place if those applications could not even be created because the APIs are not there. But of course, when we introduce web platform APIs, everyone can use them. Not only us, like good developers, but also um, scammers and so on. That's the, the backstory for uh, this, the name Project Fugu and also its mascot. OK, I think the uh, um, objective of Project Fugu is best explained by just opening the so-called Fugu API tracker. So let me just do this before we um talk too many things fugu api tracker this is a dashboard uh, that first of all shows the different versions of uh, chromium again project fugu is a chromium effort by google intel microsoft and others so what i say about project fugu basically is only related to those browsers at first but as you can also see it does not say chrome it says Chromium, yeah, because it takes into account Microsoft Edge and Brave and Opera and Samsung Internet and everyone else that uses uh, Chromium under the hood. So here we see the current versions. 115 is stable, 16 is next, 17 is the next, next version. And now here you see the APIs that have been introduced as a part of Project Fugu. So here in this column with the M, uh, this this is basically a reference to the version. So if they say M56, um, this API was released in Chromium 56, for example. And as you can see, there are some APIs that have been around for a long time already. So like the web Bluetooth API, possible to use this since version 56, for example. On the right hand side, you can see the operating systems where this API is available. Not all APIs make sense in every platform. Um, so that's why you won't see like all of the platforms here 
like all of the time. Okay, and as you can see, here's many here are many things. Badging API I've just shown you, or the file system access API, you've seen that before. Possibility to set PWAs as auto start apps, um, a shortcut uh, menu. This is when you right click the app, for example, you can add more uh, info here. Um, file handling is, is another thing. Local font access this is what I meant uh, before, uh, and so on and so on. And then here you can see the APIs that are implemented next. Um, so for example, currently they experiment with an API called compute pressure, where you can get an information about how, um, how much load there is on the system so that you can reduce load on the system by, for example, using less powerful algorith algorithms or um, disabling uh, animations and so on. That's the, the compute pressure API currently in the so-called origin trial. Um, and then here you see the APIs that are about to be implemented next. For example, an API to access the ambient light sensor. So you can respond to changes in the ambient light. If the user is in a dark environment, you can automatically go to the dark mode, for example. And if they go in the sunlight, you can switch to light mode again. And then here's the long, long list of things that have been started uh, being implemented. And then there's an even longer list of APIs that are under consideration. For example, like stuff like direct printing yeah, or better printing and so on um, are things that um, yeah, are desperately needed or uh, possibilities to block and or detect screenshots also um, an interesting thing. Um, whenever you are interested in an API, you can click it. Okay, that's uh, that's an uh, under consideration task. Let's use the web Bluetooth API task. Um, typically, you will find a short description of what the other um, vendors think about it, link to the bug, link to a specification if it exists, uh, link to demos, and so on. So again, Project Fugu wants to make the application a more powerful place. Uh, for application developers and on the Fugu API tracker, you can find the um, list of APIs that are planned as a part of that effort. All of the APIs are um, always cross-platform. This means that you, as an application developer, all you have to do is call one single JavaScript API. So in case of the web share API, where you can share a file using AirDrop or any other means uh, using the platform-specific share functionality, all you will do is call the dot .share method on Navigator and nothing else. And now it's the browser's turn because the browser has to make sure that on the target op system, it will call the actual platform specific implementation in order to complete the share functionality, such as the share intent, the data transfer manager on, 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 on Android, data transfer manager on Windows, or the NS sharing service picker on macOS, or whatever else API on whatever else platform. Okay, next I wanna show you how uh, those APIs look, so how you can use them. And I wanna start with the file system access API. Um, this is the possibility to open files and overwrite them, and save them and so on. This API is a little bit, uh, there's no consensus here. So currently it's Chromium only because Firefox, so Mozilla and Apple do not support this API, only a subset of it. Um, so this is only available in the Chromium-based browsers right now. And here's how that code looks. Um, so basically you can open an, an open file picker as you may be familiar with them uh, from desktop operating systems. You can say that you wanna have more than one file or just one using the multiple property. You can specify which types you want to support and so on. And then what you will get back is a, is a handle, the file handle that you can use to um, to overwrite the file later on. All right, let's see um, and implement this API in our little demo project. So I will switch um, to the um, to my code here. And uh, so just that you remember, this is like the, the little stripped down version of the app. Uh, and so currently the open button won't work and I want to make that, I want to make that work. Uh, and in order to do so, I can now switch to the app component, find the open method that is here. And here I have like a fake uh, handle right now. And we want to make that like the proper handle. 
so I will say here, const uh, handle. I use this structuring here to get hold of the first handle. And then we can say window um, show open file picker this file options. And essentially, that's it. Um, and the file options here, I have defined we want to be able to open PNG files. And by default, the selection of multiple files is disabled. So we will only be able to select a, a single file. Um, I will now switch to development mode. Uh, so this means we will also uh, need to use Edge in order to show it, localhost 4200. Um, and now this open method should work. Let me click it. And you can see we get the open box. Um, I can load in um, the uh, drawing that we created earlier today. Perfect. So as you can see, those APIs are really simple to use. And it's really just, it's, it's a single line statement, right? To get, um, to get access uh, to this particular file handle. And again, we could now use this handle, for example, to override the file that we've just created, uh, that we've just opened. That is the file system access API. Another example is the so-called, or the so-called async clipboard API. This allows you to uh, read from or write to the clipboard in an asynchronous manner. Important is that reading from the clipboard requires the consent of the user first due to privacy constraints. We remember the FUGU, right? So if you want to be able to read from the clipboard like every time, that's not a good idea because you could have passwords in there or um, bank information and stuff. Uh, so that's not what we want to do. Uh, so uh, on the first read, the user will have to grant access. On Safari, basically also on every read. OK, let's see how to implement this API. It's uh, relatively straightforward for the plain text versions because there's shorthand methods for them. There's like the write text method and the read text method. Um, and they would give us the, the plain text. But we have images here, PNG data. Uh, so we will have to use the write and the read method in order to um, yeah, set and get data to and from the clipboard. Let's have a look at that next. So I will just move down a bit to the next um, uh, method, which is called copy. And here we can now use the navigator.clipboard.write method. Um, and now set the things that we want to write. Now, interesting here is that we will see two lists, actually. The first one is a list of clipboard items, and each clipboard item can have different representations. So in our case, we will only have one item and only one representation, so only one drawing has PNG data. But for example, if you copy in a Microsoft Excel cell, you may want to copy it as an image, or you may want to copy it as text or as an Excel cell to paste it into another Excel window. And so that's why you can, first of all, have multiple items, many things you want to select, and also multiple rep, uh, representations of one and the same item. OK, so here, as I said, I only have one item, and I also only have one representation. So I say image uh, PNG here. Um, and then we say this paint service to blob in order to get hold of the image data. and now we will uh, now we are able to copy uh, the contents to the clipboard so let's go back to the app here we can draw something i can click copy uh, and i could bring over here my my presentation and if i paste it here then you will see this is my drawing from my application here so this is perfectly possible All right, that's the async clipboard API. Another very interesting API is the so-called file handling API. And this allows us to register our PWA as a handler for a certain file extension. So as you've seen, the Paint app registers for PNG files. Um, this, of course, now requires that the application is being installed first. Um, and so this means this is an extension to the so-called wrapper manifest that we've seen before. So in case of this API, we need to do two things. First of all, we need to register for um, for uh, being an editing program in the web app manifest. It's number one. And then um, we need to respond to being opened as a file handler during runtime. And that is this API here. That's number two. 
ein Arbeitsschau gebraucht, dann in Order. Okay, so let's start with the Web of Manifest. So here we can extend that by the file handlers object. Uh, you can have more than one file handler. In our case, we only have one. We first of all need to specify the action. This is our root um, route again. And we want to accept um, image slash PNG files with the extension dot png um, again we have like windows systems they or yeah windows like systems they have a look at the extension unix based systems have a look at the media type so that's why we have both then we can also specify icons if we want but we will skip that here that's number one that's for the registration and then we need to uh, switch to the app component again that's for the runtime part and here um, basically, I check if we have access uh, to the launch queue, and if we have it, we can say window launch queue set consumer. We will get the parameters, um, and then we can get hold of the handles, handle uh, params dot files. Um, and if we have one, then we want to load the file, okay, handle dot get file. We want to get hold of the image data inside this paint service, get image from file, oops, from file, and then we want to draw the image on our canvas again. This, of course, requires us um, to build the app again. Um, so I will just for the moment um, yeah, uninstall our application here. Basically, to not run into any caching issues, I will just kill the app like entirely and install. Okay. Ah. Now we need to run ng build again. And then after we have this, I will go back to the disk folder, um, workshop, npx, client server. And then we should be able to run the application again. That was localhost 3000. And I think we lost you, Christian, for a moment. Yes, you are sorry. Yep. Wrong. I hit the wrong key. <laughs> really sorry about that. Um, uh, so now we are here back um, and now we can install the app, right? Click install again. Um, and now if I go to the desktop and find a PNG file, right click it and say paint workshop, it will open our paint workshop Angular PWA again with the file that I've just selected from the finder window. And this is file handling. All right. Good. Let's have a look at the browser support here. This time it's different because um, async clipboard API is quite fine, I guess. So it's available in the Chromium based browsers and on Safari, but only partially on Firefox because they only support write text. Um, file system access is currently only available on Chromium based browsers on desktop. So I also see the, the support varies. Like for the first stage, Paint, it's working on all browsers, PWA, most browsers, capabilities rather in the Chromium based browsers. So the browser support varies a bit. Okay, this brings us to the um, fourth uh, talking point of today. Uh, that is progressive enhancement, you should always make sure that um, you don't break users that use older browsers. Uh, and this is actually quite simple to implement because before just blindly using an API, you should check if it's actually available on that system. So for example, you should check if we actually have um, a show safe file picker API on window before we just blindly call it. Because if we would and the browser is not supported, the application will break. So you should always just, in the most easy uh, version, you can just uh, use an if statement. And alternatively, you can also, for example, 
um, if you don't have it, right, use a fallback API. So in many cases, the web has like an alternative API uh, available. So you may use that, or you just disable gray out or just hide the functionality entirely if it's not available on the target system. If you would implement a PWA using Fugu features, uh, you would be in a good company. So Microsoft uh, has released Visual Studio Code as a web version on VS Code.dev. Um, it's basically just the VS Code code editor that has been web-based like all of the time already, at least the UI. And thanks to the file system access API, you can now also simply um, load code files from the file system, change them, set them back, and so on. And Photoshop has released its web-based version of um, uh, Adobe, sorry, has released its web-based version of Photoshop uh, just, I think, one and a half years ago. Uh, and they also make use of Fugu features. In fact, they even partnered with uh, Google. Uh, they implemented some of the features that Photoshop needed in order to get uh, Photoshop on the web. So as you see, if you would do stuff like that, you would be in a very good company by at least Microsoft and Adobe and Coral and many, many others. Now the question is, does anyone use that stuff? And uh, there's an interesting uh, publication called the uh, Web Almanac um, that's currently pausing for this year. So um, what I show you here is like the latest numbers from 2022, like the latest version. Uh, and here, um, the authors basically monitored if um, how the numbers changed. So the usage in, uh, of the APIs uh, how, the, how it changed. And so here uh, on the async clipboard API, um, we found out that um, basically before, so in 2021, 8.91% of all desktop websites used the async clipboard API. And in 2022, it's now 10.1% of all, of all desktop websites. And in the case of file system access, it basically exploded, right? So in 2021, it was 29 desktop websites. And in 2022, it's like over 2,000 already, which is a massive uh, increase over like the um, original number. So yes, people are using that. If you want to know more about that, you can uh, use this link here. Uh, ah, I can also just paste it again um, into the chat. Ah, yeah, maybe also for the Fugu API tracker, because it also may be interesting for you. So let me bring it up. Here's the Fugu API tracker. Um, yeah, so you can look that up if you want. It's really interesting and insightful data. OK, so to summarize this. Personally, I would say that Angular loves Project Fugu. Angular is a great um, framework to build large scale applications um, with all of the like architectural means that it has, right? With dependency injection and different building blocks like services and components and directives and pipes and so on, uh, which really help architect, um, as I've said, even large scale applications. And that makes it, of course, a great fit um, for project uh, for PWAs, right? Which bring web applications to the to an entirely new level, and Project Fugu that even extends um, on that and implements more and more features um, for you as web application developers. So my call to action would be: go ahead and build great web applications with the help of Angular and Project Fugu. Basically, that's all what I wanted to share with you. And now we can use like the remaining minutes for Q and A. If you have any questions, hey Christine, thanks a lot for sharing a lot of insights on PWA and also Project Fugu with cool demos. Um, I don't see any questions on the chat, but I have a couple of questions. Uh, you talked about a lot of benefits on the PWAs uh, with single code base, cross platform, offline first. But what are the limitations when you are like? when you're building PW apps. Uh, basically, as a developer, you need to consider, based on my knowledge, like you can't leverage all the features which are natively available on mobile, right? Um, I think that's where we need to be a bit more careful. But can you elaborate more on the limitations as well? Yeah, sure. 
And I think you've mentioned the most important uh, limitation because, as you say, um, there will there will be APIs that will never be made available on the web, right? At least not in, in the open form of the web as we know it. Uh, so yes, if you need stuff like that, like for, I don't know, anti, uh, anti-virus software or cloud sync agents or something like this, that's not to be expected uh, to be implemented as a PWA. Um, but still, you can implement your app as a as a web application and then package it. This is what um, things like Spotify and, and, and Discord and Slack uh, and so on currently do, um, because they, I assume, need some of the platform specific APIs. They simply wrap their app that is, in fact, just a web application in uh, Electron container or Tori container or whatever. Uh, and then it can still retain the single code base, but still call all of the platform specific APIs. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And the second question is you talked about converting an Angular application using a single command, right? Is there any other any other uh, you know changes that a developer needs to do in order to um, like add the features what he has on the Angular app, or is it just a single command that would uh, do all the magic? Yeah, in fact, it's it's not really just that simple. Uh, that's a simple single command, right? Um, because it also has has effects on the architecture. So if you want to build an application that is truly offline uh, capable, for example, that even includes like the data, and then of course the architecture of the application looks com completely different because it needs like a client database, right? So offline first is the buzzword here. Um, and then it's not only that that single command that you need to add, but you need to think about that like directly from the beginning. Got it. Okay. Yep. I think those were the questions that I had. I don't see any other questions on the chat, but I think we have uh, we are right on time. Uh, we have come to the end of the session today. I hope everyone learned something new today, and you would leverage learnings in your projects. Uh, with that, thanks everyone for joining, and thanks Christian for uh, for your time and also. Enjoy your trip to Portugal. Uh, we will meet again soon in Thank another you. session. Have a good uh, rest of the day, everyone. Sounds good. Thank you. It was really great. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.